The Championship Curse. Is it real or is it simply a myth? The Super Bowl hangover is a term often given to the team who loses the Super Bowl. And this does have some traction. The Los Angeles Rams, for example, followed up their Super Bowl loss with a 9-7 season, missing the playoffs. My very own Carolina Panthers have followed both their Super Bowl losses with 7-9 and 6-10 and seasons. This phenomenon can happen to the Super Bowl champion as well, but with success of the New England Patriots and the Dallas Cowboys, this theory seems to be shattered. In NASCAR, this theory doesn't apply too well either as of late, considering the success of drivers like Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, and Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch has made the Final Four in five consecutive seasons, but he's only won two of them. Jimmy Johnson won five straight, so this curse does not apply to him either. Kevin Harvick hasn't won since 2014, but I'd be lying if I said he was cursed. He's had a fruitful career at Stuart Haas. So does this really apply to NASCAR? Maybe not, at least in the real world. Let's dive into my fictional world of stop motion and take a peek at the past champions in my series. Carl Edwards, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, Gino Harvey slash Greg Biffle, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Eric Jones, Kyle Larson, and Ryan Blaney are all champions of the Mainline Series. Let's just see if this champion's curse has any effect on their path to victory in the Athletic Cup Series, shall we? Carl Edwards was the Season 1 champion. In 10 races, he boasted 4 top 5s and 8 top 10s. Add 2 victories to his resume and you have a deserving champion. Being the inaugural champion, a lot rides on your shoulders for the following seasons to come. But was Carl cursed by winning the first championship? The schedule saw 20 races in Season 2, and Carl Edwards did not shy away from visiting the front. Except, he never captured a checkered flag. 17 top 10s and 9 top 5s is an incredible feat, but was just the start of a slow decline in the Athletic Cup Series. An additional race was added to the Season 3 schedule, and Carl began to struggle. Carl once again went winless and only captured 10 top 10s and 4 top 5s. This was his lowest point finish to date, with an 11th place finish. In Season 5, Carl struggled mightily and finished 17th in points. Winning the inaugural championship puts Carl on a pedestal, but he never saw the same success from Season 1 and even Season 2. Carl would slowly become a high mid-tier driver and retired after Season 8. Jeff Gordon has a very interesting story following his Season 3 championship. Without a doubt, Jeff Gordon dominated Season 3. In 21 races, Jeff Gordon recorded a league-leading 13 top 10s with 9 top 5s along with 3 trophies. Following up the Season 3 championship, Jeff Gordon was a serious contender to repeat. He lost the Season 2 championship to his teammate Jimmy Johnson by 5 points and was ready to get after it in Season 4. He opened up the season by uh, wrecking in the AFLAC 200. Jeff Gordon had a four race stretch of finishing outside the top 10, with three of those being outside the top 20. G Gordon was swirled in controversy with Clint Boyer, and he ended up missing the chase for the cup. He did win two races, but those were done as a playoff spoiler. Jeff flat out struggled and was the first to really experience the champion's curse to the extreme. Depending on which timeline you chose for season four, Either Gino Harvey was the champion, or Greg Biffle was the champion. Either way you look at it, both became champions real quick in Season 5. Gino Harvey had 3 wins, 9 top 5s, and 13 top 10s in his version of the Season 4 championship. Season 5 quickly became a nightmare. There are 28 races in Season 5, and the Machino was only able to muster 4 top 5s and 7 top 10s. Greg Biffle was even worse, placing only three top fives, which were his only top tens as well. And one of those was a victory. Biffle and Harvey both struggled and were hit hard with the ACS championship curse. Kyle Busch was the reigning champion in Season 6. This season introduced the newest playoff format in NASCAR with Round of Elimination System. Season 6 had a 10 race playoff with 16 drivers. Every three races, four drivers were eliminated. Kyle Busch qualified for the playoffs and had made it to the round of 12. The elimination race for the round of 12 was at Watkins Glen and Kyle Busch was right on the bubble, 
until a late race caution took him out of contention and he was eliminated. But this may be the worst curse so far, because in the real world, he broke his legs at this time in the Xfinity Series race at Daytona. I thought it would be a good idea to introduce this unfortunate event, which was dumb, but it happened and there's no changing the past. Kyle Busch was sidelined for the remainder of season six. He finished with one win, five top fives, and 10 top tens. In season seven, Joey Logano reigned supreme over the competition and won the championship. This was supposed to be the final season of the Athletic Cup Series, but I couldn't stay away. Joey Logano was up to the challenge of defeating the champion's curse. Joey Logano made the playoffs, but was consumed by the elimination monster in the round of 12 in the season eight playoffs. In this season, there were only 12 drivers invited to the playoffs. In a way, he succeeded by making it. He was a contender, only to be washed away quickly at Talladega. He followed up his championship season with four top fives and nine top tens in 24 races. This curse has had zero impact on Logano's performance in the Cup Series as well. He was the 2018 champion and was a finalist in NASCAR's championship event in 2020. Logano is sure to be a contender for decades to come in NASCAR. Now we move on to Eric Jones. What a Cinderella story in the Athletic Cup Series. A champion that nobody expected, but one that everyone deserved. Eric Jones was able to make it to the round of eight in a 16 driver field. In the closing laps at Texas, Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch tangled for the lead, opening the door for Eric Jones. That Jones boy took the lead in the victory, advancing him to the final four at Detroit. Jones led the championship contenders for most of the day until the closing laps when he started to drop through the field into the clutches of Ryan Blaney and Jimmy Johnson. They went three wide, down the back in the closing laps and ended up crashing. Eric Jones was able to keep running while Blaney and Johnson were done for the day. Eric Jones became the season nine champion and then there was the following season. The championship curse is simply a myth. There are no trends in the history of the Athletic Cup Series that say a champion won't follow the season with terrible luck and poor finishes, right? Well, let's see Eric Jones' numbers in this 10 race season, 10. Drum roll please. Eric Jones in 10 races had only one top five and three top tens? It took him until race six of the season to find a top 10 finish. Jones finished outside the top 20 for the first five races and was almost the back marker of the point standings. In the last five races, Jones had a ninth, a second, and a seventh place finish to close the season. Eric Jones ultimately lost his ride at JGR and now races for Petty Enterprises. That Jones boy has fallen off a cliff since his miraculous season nine championship, proving that this curse is strong with the force. Surely the championship curse would not impact our season 10 champion. Kyle Larson dominated the year and went on to claim the championship in a close battle with Martin Truex Jr. But not even a week after the season 10 finale, tragedy struck for Kyle and his fan base. Through his own actions, he destroyed his own career with a slip of the tongue. A lesson learned the hard way, but a valuable one at that. This moment was horrible at the time, but it opened both Kyle's eyes and hearts to the African American community and the oppression they faced daily. Still, this error in judgment took place within the days after he was crowned the ACS champion, fulfilling the, the curse to the highest degree. Whether this curse is real or not, that's for you to decide. There are definitely some strong cases for it, but then there are some drivers who are immune to curses, mainly Jimmy Johnson. The man has had a lucky horseshoe since the late 2000s, and that is no different in the stop motion world. He is the only two-time champion and could have easily been a three-time champion in season nine. Dale Jr. is an outlier, mainly because he retired at the end of season eight, but Statistics do show there is a steep decline in performance the years following a championship run. Will Ryan Blaney be any different, or will he be the one to crush the trend, just like Jimmy Johnson?